Well, the movie is titled Alejandro. And no, it doesn't have an H. Well, let's <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> Our artist of the week is Sam Ojo. He's a Nigerian-American actor and producer. Sam produced a movie called Alejandro, and he produced other indie movies in the UK and US, um, and recently uh, the one that we call Alejandro. He's born in a city well known for art and culture in Nigeria. A major dying, not, not dying as in death, but dying as in changing the color of a thing, and a UNESCO That's World it. Heritage. Yes, you know. So his father was a renowned photographer in the 70s, and there were numerous known art uh, dramatists in the city and well let's just let's not tell all of his story let him, let's allow him to tell his story for us samojo uh, joins us this morning thank you so much for joining us and um, congratulations thank you thank you thank you for having me good morning well for a second my colleague here thought you were someone else are you impersonating anyone <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Who have you been told that you look like? <laughs> no, it's, it's still the same me. Uh, I, I, I have never changed. So I'm really glad to be with you this morning. Thank you. Well, uh, the question is, I mean, for one, some could mistake you to look like someone else, like um, maybe a Kunle Afola. He actually, she actually said, well, is that not Kunle Afola? I said, no. <laughs> Uh, that that doesn't even look for like a photocopy. <laughs> for 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 me, I get that a lot. You know, even uh, before I decided to go into movie production, I would be at the airport, and a lot of people were like, "Are you Kunle Afolayo's brother, or are you Kunle Afolayo?" And I say, "No." And they will say, "Oh, you look like Kunle Afolayo." I say, "Oh, is that a compliment?" Because is it that Kuli Afolaya looks like me or I look like him? But whichever way, thank you. It's a compliment. I appreciate that. For all we care, <laughs> you look like each other. We don't Full know stop. who looks like you. Full stop. Yeah. <laughs> One looks like the other. Yeah, just like a story I heard in the course mm. of the week that there was a man driving on the city of Lagos and he looked exactly like the president. But I don't even know what I don't want to I don't know what to say about that one. But uh, Sam. Um, so walk us through your journey into filmmaking. Um, you ever, you always wanted to do this or was something that just happened? No, it just didn't just happen. I have always been an activist all my life. And apart from that, I grew up in a, in a family where creative art is at the top notch. My dad was a photographer, very renowned photographer from where I came from. Apart from that, uh, I was born in a city where creative art was at the top notch as well. So I've always liked to make a movie or tell my story in a different way. And as I grew up uh, back then in late uh, 70s, and uh, early 80s, I was so passionate about a lot of social vices in our society, particularly injustice. And I realized after moving out of Nigeria, I realized that injustices is, are everywhere. You know, we always complain about so many social vices in Nigeria, but upon moving to UK and later to the United States, I realized that, man, it rains everywhere. So I decided to start telling the story and contribute my own, in my own little way to the society by telling a story that actually happened and tell it to the authority so that something can, can be changed. And that's why I decided to make this movie. Before I made Alejandro, I have done some um, short, short films and some uh, feature films here in the state of Oklahoma, but this is the biggest um, commercialized feature movie that I'm producing. What is the story of Alejandro? Tell it to us in like four sentences. <laughs> okay, uh, first sentences, that would be <laughs> difficult, but I will try to make it really short. So this story is about a man that is considered a lesser man in the society. And 
the name of that person is Alejandro Gomez. He is a Mexican and he was about to be railroaded for the crime that he did not commit. So he was about to be sentenced. Um, he was found guilty and they were, they, he, he was just about to be railroaded. And there was another guy in the state of Oklahoma who was not considered a, an appropriate person. Um, he's a successful lawyer, he has an accent, and he lives in Oklahoma. You don't usually see that. And this guy stepped in on a locution on pro bono for, for this man. But the real moral of the story is when he stepped in to help, he wasn't even thinking of maybe the outcome of the, the case, but he was thinking about how helping another person has actually helped me it helped himself to be a better person in the society. And that's exactly the moral part of it, that when we face an adversity, we look up to the Lord who can be our help. Hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's an interesting angle to take it from, but um, more issues to be raised on that when we return from this break. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Now, Sam, let's look at um, you as a person. Let's leave Alejandro and your filmmaking for a bit. Tell us about you and why did you check out? <laughs> I think it's about time to check out, to be honest. Um, I've been in my own little world doing my thing and I decided that it's about time to start telling my story. So to make it really simple, I was born in Oshobo, now Ocean State. Then it was Oyo State. And I attended Federal University of Technology at Korea, where I studied engineering, geology, and engineering. Then I worked for oil and gas for a couple of years. Then I decided to you know, go into the entertainment industry. So I went to film school here in the state of Oklahoma and I trained myself to be an actor and a film producer. So, and that's exactly why I, I am producing this movie right now. But the real reason why I am doing this is to tell our stories to the world. For example, in Alejandro, uh, I'm sorry, taking you back to Alejandro, we tried to educate uh, Nigerian people about other culture, about Mexican culture, Kinsinaria, for example, how is Kinsinaria is done. And even for the fact that we are educating Nigeria on Alejandro, the pronunciation of Alejandro, I think it's one achievement that we made uh, from my production crew, uh, because a lot of people will say Alejandro, and, and, and I really appreciate that. And another main reason is like I mentioned earlier on, I have always been an activist. I really want a better world and I want to change things better for um, my children coming after me. So I, if I see anything that is wrong in the society, I want to make it in a picture where people in the government, people in authority, people in leadership will see that and maybe we can start talking about it. Maybe there will be a change and that's the main reason why I decided to make the movie Alejandro. Hey, when when I'm, you say I'm you are an activist, um, it, it definitely it doesn't sound like human rights activist, but in what area? <laughs> 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 I am actually a human rights activist. Uh, I have participated in a lot of struggles, um, even when I was in Nigeria, uh, during the days of Abasha, um, OP93, uh, MKU Abiola, I was in the forefront um, in uh, Tinubu Square over there. Um, we. I've always been in, in, in the forefront. Even when I was in college, in the university, I was a public relations officer for the student union and I was in the NANS as well. So upon moving outside of Nigeria, I still participated in anything, um, activism, um, Black Lives Matters or anything that is important to me. 
I am highly opinionated person. So I always want to tell my story. Of course, I listen to other people's view and I try to make a very good um, intellectual decisions. A huge population of youths all over the world now and Africa no less, more so Nigeria. Uh, and there's a lot of disillusionment, so to speak, and because opportunities are limited as far as many of them are concerned, and the future is definitely coming. The future, the, the, we cannot pause time. The future is coming. What would you be saying to anyone so we do not have a bleak future or we have a certain and sustainable one? Hmm. That's, that, that, you are very correct. Um, the future is coming. Um, I would definitely advise anybody around the world to actually know your onions, regardless of where you want to live, uh, regardless of what you're doing. If you decide to be an engineer, be uh, the top-notch engineer. Let me use myself uh, as an example, and this is not to brag or anything. Um, I worked for oil and gas and I was in the management. Like if you have to compare that with the Nigerian um, territory, what I was managing was like the oil market in Nigeria and Equatoria Guinea for my company that is actually based in Nigeria as well. So the, the reason why I could achieve that was because I made sure that when I compete with other people, I actually know exactly what I'm doing and uh, push myself really hard to do better. So this, this is what I would encourage anyone, know something. Uh, if, if you're a plumber, if you're an electrician, uh, whatever that you decide to do, make sure that you know it very well inside out understand the, the trade and the craft, and then, you know, look forward to the future. Okay. Sam, in parenthesis, where are you in Oklahoma? I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Ah. Well, Tulsa happens to be second home for me. But in the <laughs> meantime, <laughs> what are you working on at the moment? So uh, the, the movie Alejandro is actually going to be out. So we are doing the post-production right now. I mean, the post-production is done. Sorry, I apologize for that. It's, it's completed. So we are working on putting it on the cinema here in the US and of course uh, with some other cinemas uh, back home in Nigeria as well, if possible. And um, we are at the... Uh, conceptualizing stage of another movie, which is called the center of the universe. And basically uh, there is this popular saying that there is center of the universe in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So I want to make that a movie uh, talking about uh, strange people coming from Nigeria to, to see where there is center of universe and they find themselves in Oklahoma sometimes. I don't want to give you a spoiler about it because we are still uh, developing the concepts and, mm. and see how we can educate people and inculcate our culture into it. Any plan for using more Nigerians in that movie? Oh, oh, absolutely. And that is exactly my, my goal. I really want to collaborate with um, artist, um, actors and actresses from Nigeria. And I want to uh, get more people here to Nigeria as well. Like uh, what you were discussing before I came on board about Damini Oguru and I, um, I, Ayodeji Balogun, you know, winning the Grammy Award and stuff like that. You know, this could be possible because they were able to collaborate with um, like uh, great artists from, from the United States. So, and that's exactly my passion and my vision. Um, when I have met with some of these big producers here, I always talk about, about these and talk about the market in Nigeria and what we can do together. Yeah, I, we, we're, we're looking forward. This. Yeah, we're, we're looking forward to, to more of that because ultimately 
That's what it's about, Nigeria to the world, right? Sam Ojo yeah. is a Nigerian-American actor and producer, and thank you so much for your time and thoughts this morning, and all the best with Alejandro. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. You're welcome. And that wraps up the show for today. We shall bring you a fresh one next week. I'm Alero Do wishing you all the best till we see you again next week. And I'm Ayo Makide. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend.